G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here with an update on the Olympic fever movies that I made 10 days ago. There's more news, not much more news, but I think this might be a case of almost no news is almost good news. Right? Whereas I began with a movie on the uh, 31st of July and then another movie on the 1st of August and we were five or six days into the Olympics at that point and I was looking at the overlap between the 21 day incubation period and the end of the Olympics we're now on the 12th of August there has been a new scientist magazine article which came out in the issue for the 4th of August and uh, I know a bit more about Ebola than I used to a large part of the extra knowledge comes from the 4th of August New Scientist magazine article on page 4. And uh, you're just going to have to trust me to read it to you. The caption there says, avoid physical contact. Ebola spreads to Ugandan capital. Quote, I wish you luck. End quote. Those were the words of Ugandan President Yawiri Museveni, after announcing on the 28th of July that there were cases of Ebola hemorrhagic fever in the capital, Kampala. He asked that people avoid physical contact and report suspected cases. The outbreak is of the Sudan strain of Ebola, which kills around 60% of those infected. The Zaire strain kills 90%. There have been 20 known cases so far and 14 deaths starting in early July with a pregnant woman in the Kibali district west of Uganda, of West Uganda, then eight relatives who attended her funeral. It also killed her nurse and the nurse's baby. The virus appears to be spreading only with close contact, making it unlikely to rampage through Kampala. The Sudan strain killed 224 people in northwest Uganda in 2000, and one person last year. The virus persists in wild fruit bats and occasionally jumps to people. So that was the New Scientist article on the 4th of August. I do get my news agent to hold the magazine for me, but I'm a little bit behind in reading them. And I haven't started reading the current 11th of August New Scientist yet. But I have been through it and it contains nothing at all on Ebola. And I guess that, uh, that has to be a good thing because if it had gone wild and rampant in Kampala then that could hardly be hidden from the world's media. So, almost no news is almost good news. It means that some of the wilder speculations that were going backwards and forwards on the comment threads like one person had escaped into the city from the quarantine and uh, four more people were handcuffed to their beds to prevent them from escaping. Turned out to be a case of uh, the husband and the child of the nurse who died. They were found not to have the virus and they were released into the, uh, the community with new clothes and new bedding and new blankets and you know, given the best start that the Ugandan government can to tell them to go and start a new life. Five, or might have been four, prisoners who were in quarantine also tested negative to the virus and they've also been put back into the jail because they don't have Ebola. Now, the first outbreaks were early in July. We're now in the middle of August, you know, 11th, 12th of August. So we're just barely on the 42-day quarantine period. Now, I know it's a 42-day quarantine period because I heard the spokesperson from Médecins Sans Frontières on the BBC World Service radio last night discussing it, and they pointed out that because it's got a 21-day incubation period, you have to hold people in quarantine for 42 days to prove that there's no more Ebola circulating in the group in the quarantine. So it's a little bit interesting that 
somebody was coming down with Ebola in the first week of July and we're in the second week of August and they're already letting people out saying, well, we've tested your blood and you don't have the virus. As long as they don't have any false negatives in their test, it all sounds pretty good. Now, in the rest of the article or the radio coverage, the spokesperson from Medicine Sans Frontier said that Quote, the situation is probably controlled. Um, they've got absolutely confirmed deaths in three cases. There are 19 people who are dead, so there's 16 people that they either can't get specimens from because they got buried in the hinterlands or they, for other reasons, whatever it is, they don't know, but they think they died of Ebola. Um, it seems to be controlled, was what the bloke from MSF said. The link to people is apparently Ebola circulates in the bat population. The bats get weak, therefore they can't fly away when the people come along with guns or blowpipes. The people shoot the sick bats, and then they eat the sick bats and they get the Ebola. So, <clears throat> pretty please stop eating bats. Um, and apparently the other bit of good news is Ebola has not showed up in Kenya. There was apparently some fear that it had showed up in Kenya. So it looks like maybe perhaps planet Earth's humans have got away with it yet again. They've had an outbreak of a virulent virus, which it's classed as a biological weapon because, and this is from 55 Ella 2007K told me this, thanks Ella, Ebola has infected primates in the laboratory with micro droplet aerosols therefore it's classed as a biological weapon however it hasn't ever infected people with micro droplet aerosols my remaining concern is that if somebody's incubating ebola and they've got an upper respiratory tract infection an influenza are they not going to be sneezing due to the influenza and blowing ebola bugs out I mean, that, that seems like a possibility. There's also the possibility that um, the Ebola virus and the flu virus could hybridise in a human bioreactor who happens to have two different strains. And I'm reminded of the, um, the veterinary virologist who was interviewed in a very angry state of mind because they'd used a vaccine to treat a bunch of chickens in a battery farm the vaccine had an attenuated live strain of the virus and instead of immunising the chickens, the two viruses got together and bred a whole new mutated hybrid virus. So they had to kill all the chickens. And the virologist was really cranky that the viruses hadn't done what the textbook said they were allowed to do. They'd done what the viruses wanted to do. So I, I hesitate to say that this scare is over, but so far so good. Like I said, almost no news is almost good news. Maybe they've had their running, hopping, skipping, throwing things away, kicking balls, hitting them with a stick, sailing boats, lifting weights, walking, sailing festival, and they've got away with it. Right? Maybe they've got away with it. But uh, it's been a big gamble. It's been a very big gamble. So that's my update on the Ebola Olympics. Ciao.